So today is Saturday, February 22nd, and uh, here's some of the progress I got done this week. Um, I know I kind of might have been a little bit out of left field with the potential selling the plane video, but um, basically my thoughts were just that if I could sell it and you know help somebody else get a plane um, a little bit quicker, um, I was my plan is just to buy another kit so that once I arrive in Idaho, you know, after a couple months, maybe the kit would come in and gives me a chance to settle in and um, just start over. I love the process and I love building the plane. So, I mean, why not just do it again? And uh, could avoid, you know, the, the hassle of moving it and the cost of moving it and um, help somebody else out. I think that it's only a couple months until the plane is finished. So, um, Anyway, it's been really cool talking to a lot of you guys, calling me and a lot of interest and um, everybody's been, it was, you know, a pretty cool experience just to talk to a lot of the people who have been watching the videos. Um, I'm still just waiting to hear back on uh, whether or not there's gonna be kits available kind of at a reasonable time um, to make a final decision on whether or not selling or, or finishing is gonna be the right option. But either way, um, Worst case scenario, I don't make any videos for a couple of months while I wait for the new kit, or otherwise I'll just uh, keep building along. So as you see, I got the top skin on uh, yesterday. Uh, it goes on pretty easily, actually. Basically, all I did was kind of find the center of the top skin and center it to the, the uh, joint of these two, uh, I forget what they call them, fastening strips for the cowling and um, then make sure it goes perfectly straight along matches to the the skin here as well as the skin here and basically it just ended up lining up perfectly everywhere else um, the back comes straight to this edge um, this is a good alignment here it's a tight fit through here um, and same thing on this side. So it makes a, a nice, good alignment everywhere on the plane. Um, so then when the windshield comes in and when it's ready for the windshield, you actually trim it to fit into, because uh, there's gonna be some just slight variations on from build to build. Um, then I just made sure that the, the panel, the sub panel here kind of goes nice and vertical and uh, match drilled all of that. Uh, what I did to to get that to happen was these are called hole finders. So um, I ordered them on Amazon, pretty much like I get all these random little tools. And uh, you just kind of slide it up under, and this pin pops into the uh, the hole in the skin, and then the hole here just guides your drill bit. And so you just pop it through, and then it stops right there and every single hole came out exactly perfect. Um, obviously for these, you can uh, you could just drill them from the inside. So anywhere that that's possible, of course, all of these, anywhere that that's possible, it works, but um, the hole finder worked really well for this edge and some of these uh, uh, harder to, to reach holes. So yeah, handy little tool. They're fairly inexpensive and uh, these are pretty well built. So I think that they'll, stay in my arsenal of tools for a long time. Uh, I finally got in this uh, antenna support plate. And actually what I chose to do on this one was um, put the rivet nuts in through the skin and the plate underneath. And then I drilled the support plate so it clears the head of the rivet nut and it actually comes out flush. So when I go to mount the antenna, it should be, uh, um, no, no kind of rivet sticking up for the, the mount to from the antenna to the plate up there. So I'll rivet that down. Something I haven't talked about in a while, and I did it or I did it a while ago was I put a COM2 in right here. So the location is one rib off center. I'll, I'll go to the other side. One rib off center to the right of the aircraft. Um, what ends up happening is it looks perfect to put it 
oh, where's my finger? They're in the center between the rudder springs, but it's just a little bit too risky with the springs and the cables going through that area to have your, uh, your uh, coax cable. So I put a reinforcement plate down there between the ribs and uh, drill holes to uh, kind of mount it down. And uh, that should hold the COM2 antenna for like a bent whip um, antenna down at the bottom. Um, I've also been kind of working on just making these controls as smooth as possible in every direction. And I think I've pretty much gotten them there. They're really great on the aileron control um, because that's all the linkages uh, with the with the lubricated bearing that has a little flex. Uh, the elevator control is these uh, plastic bushings. So they doesn't it, unless it's lined up exactly perfectly it doesn't want to move smoothly so i think i've got it you know as smooth as as it needs to be um and uh so yeah i found a, a great deal a quote with a quick lead time on a on a wiring harness from uh midwest sky sports so i know that they've parted ways at some point with midwest panel builders um, but the panel builders were booked way into like July. And so that's not gonna work for this build's timeline, no matter what. And uh, yeah, Midwest Sky Sports, they were really nice. They were really helpful. They got back to me pretty quickly. I actually didn't know that they were starting to do panels. Um, so now that I do know that, um, yeah, they, they're gonna have like a four to six week lead time, which is pretty much perfectly for when I'll, when I'll potentially need it. And, uh, and, um, so yeah, that, that's, that's great. And they showed me some pictures of other, of their, uh, harnesses that they've gotten done and they looked perfect. So anyway, I also found a way to, uh, to, uh, knock out those obstructions. Basically all I did was take an eight millimeter, um, stainless steel rod that I had. They actually use them for, uh, linear guide rails on some 3d printers and uh, small CNC stuff. Um, these are a little bit less precise than say like a high wind rail or whatever. I don't even know why I'm describing that stuff right now. I'm building an airplane. So anyway, back to this. I sharpened one end. I sharpened one end like that. And then just, you know, with my flashlight on my camera, sh shined it through this end here. So you could see the obstructions and uh, just slid it through and just gave it a tap with the hammer and it cleared out pretty easily. So I've got this rod bent. It's still a little bit weird. There's actually focus for me. Come on. It's hitting the top and the bottom. So kind of makes me wonder if there's enough clearance. I might have to uh, take out some material right here because I mean, if the hole isn't the full 10 millimeters that this, this rod is, um, obviously it's never gonna operate smoothly through there. But I'll keep working with it before I do that. I think that possibly maybe it just needs a little bit more bend to it right, right at the, uh, the end. But I'm done working for the day, so I just figured I'd update. And yeah, like I said, I'm not uh, getting out of building the sling. I'm definitely gonna finish one. It's just a matter of logistics and uh, seeing if if there's a kit available that I can you know get into and have a couple of months to settle in in the meantime then it kind of just makes sense to avoid the hassle of moving it so either way I'll be here making videos and uh, I guess if I start over I'll be able to get a lot more detail about a lot more of it since I had some of the build already done before I started so all right have a good weekend everybody and uh, I'll uh, Keep you updated along the way.